Good evening, everyone. I'm Amy Mangle, your guest host for this evening's edition of Higher Ed Live, the weekly web show for marketing and web professionals. Tune in to Higher Ed Live on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, or go to higheredlive.com and join in on the conversation on Twitter using the Higher Ed Live hashtag. And you can follow me at Amy Mangle. In my day job, I had at Marketing at Read Media, we're the company behind MeritPages.com, which is used by 500 colleges to promote stories of student achievement and outcomes and to get attention for their schools and social networks and in local media. Tonight's show is all about Georgia Tech's now infamous welcome speech given by uh, Nick Selby, a sophomore, at its fall conv convocation. And a video of this speech went viral and rocketed Nick to internet stardom. So I'll talk with Georgia Tech's media relations and social media team tonight, as well as Nick, the star of the video himself, and get the backstory on how they turned the video into a national storyline. You can tell by my jacket, I'm a proud Georgia Bulldogs <laughs> grad. So the only thing keeping me in check tonight from talking a lot of football smack is the fact that Georgia Tech is a very valued read media client and user of MeritPages.com, so I promise I'll be nice, guys. Before we jump in, though, I want to uh, give some shout-outs to our sponsors. Omni Update is the leading web content management system provider for higher education. The company's web CMS, OU Campus, is secure and scalable with great tools and features, deployment flexibility, and an awesome user community. You can learn how Columbus State uses Omni Update CMS to manage 125 sites, reduce inconsistencies, and enhance workflow. And Higher Ed Live is sponsored by Uversity, formerly Integral, the creators of Schools App. It's a private Facebook community to boost enrollment and retention. You can check out their blog, Uversity Roundtable, for posts on admissions marketing, student engagement, and social media in higher education. We're tweeting the link to the blog now. And this month, M. Stoner, a marketing communications agency focused on higher education web strategy and development since 2001, is presenting two advanced web analytics webinars. This professional development opportunity is perfect for marketing and communications managers and directors who want to learn how analytics can inform their online strategies and for senior communications professionals and vice presidents who want to strengthen their understanding of Google Analytics. We're tweeting out a link now where you can learn more and register. Institutions can register for individual webinars or get a discount by signing up for both. The folks at M. Stoner are great. So let's jump in and introduce our guest tonight. We've got Stephen Norris. He's the social media coordinator at Georgia Tech. Hey, Stephen. Hey there. We also have Matt Nagel joining us, and he leads media relations for Georgia Tech. Hi, Matt. How are you doing, Amy? It's a pleasure to be here. Great. And then finally, Nick Selby, the sophomore who's at the center of the viral video we're going to discuss tonight. He's taking a break from studying, and he's joining us as well. So hello, Nick. Hi, Amy. So tonight we're going to talk about what is now this infamous video from Georgia Tech's freshman convocation this fall. It made ripples across the internet and then it crossed over to mainstream media as well. And of course I'm talking about the video from Nick. He gave a rousing welcome speech to Tech's 3,000 freshmen and their parents. And he may have just been hoping for a round of applause, but what resulted was a video that was viewed millions of times on YouTube. It was a national and an international television sensation, and it was posted to hundreds of news sites and blogs. So during tonight's show, we'll dig in on how the communications team at Georgia Tech was instrumental in amplifying and maximizing the exposure this video received. But Matt, I want to start by having you just give us some background on Convocation and what it is and what it means at Georgia Tech. What's the event all about? Well, I think, first of all, I have to give kudos to our special events team. Laura Pusateri, Serena Wallace, and Stephanie Sigler all do a great job of kind of uh, creating an experience uh, for students that are kind of the new incoming class. I say new class because it's not just incoming freshmen, but also transfer students and others that are new to the university. And what they try to do is just create a, kind of an atmosphere to um, have a kind of an extension of orientation. They really try to kind of prepare the students for Georgia Tech traditions as well as let them hear from leadership. Um, and it really is kind of that first time that they're kind of united as a community, as a new class. And uh, 
Nick was was chosen to be the sophomore speaker, which is someone who kind of gives uh, those new students a firsthand account of what it is like to be at Georgia Tech and, and kind of give them that experience just a year after he was in their shoes. So Nick, tell us about how you ended up in the role of student speaker and what that process was like. For sure. So I began by submitting an abstract because I wanted to, and that's what the email told me to do, was submit an abstract if you're interested. And they liked the abstract, so they asked for a, uh, a audition tape. And so I sent in an audition tape, and they liked that too, and so I was supposed to be the speaker. Great. And when you um, you got up there, you had clearly and you had rehearsed this and put together a really thrilling speech. It wasn't just something that you did off the cuff. Did anyone else know what you were going to say? I mean, was it, did anyone really know what they were in for? <laughs> sure. Uh, the the people who had seen and been a part of the selection process for the speaker position uh, knew knew what they were in for, if you will, because it was in the audition tape. But uh, as for the students, none of them had any idea. I rehearsed it once in front of my grandma and another time in front of uh, some of my friends, and that was that was really it. Um, so not 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 amongst the audience, no. So Stephen, then you were one of the people who was kind of being surprised and watching this unfold. At what point did you realize when you were sitting there that this had the makings of a social media sensation, and what were the first steps that you took? Well, uh, I. I was lucky enough to be on the uh, on the front row for this fantastic speech, and um, you know, I had this feeling while the speech was going on, uh, just so many emotions. Like, I want to go to school here, you know. <laughs> and I think that was the general response that a lot of people had. Um, but uh, kind of the first thing I said, I, I I turned to one of the event organizers who was there and and asked her, "We're we're recording this, right?" And she. Um, had a she had a little bit of an earpiece in with everyone, and we made sure that we were recording. And um, so, yeah, the, as soon as as soon as I found out that we, you know we were recording the video, um, then we took the next steps about making sure that we could get it posted. And what was the turnaround time for producing the video? So, how did you decide what to excerpt, and how long after convocation did you? What? How long was it until you had it kind of up on YouTube and you were out there and promoting it? Well, we have um, there's a we, we do a lot of analytics for videos, of course, and we know about how long um, how long videos are, are going to be to do well. So I, I think in general, we know anything over a couple minutes, people are just going to kind of tune out. Uh, what a lot of people didn't realize was that uh, this speech was actually almost an eight minute speech that Nick gave. He had had no um, no cue cards. He had it all memorized and gave the performance that way. Um, so we had to cut down the best part out of uh, out of that speech, and there was just about a minute and forty seconds at the end, and and we were able to take that. Uh, that was the highest priority of, of cutting that that fantastic part out of the speech. Then we went ahead and posted uh, the full version of the speech as well. And then once the video was up, what were your first steps, and where did you start with promoting it? We started uh, by posting it on our social media channels. Uh, our Facebook page, uh, of course, it was on our YouTube page. That's that's where it kind of um, originated from. But we posted on our on our Facebook page, on our Twitter page, um, and that's really when we started to see other blogs starting to pick up, up on it. At this point, people are already sharing on Facebook and Twitter uh, on a personal level. Students were starting to talk about it, and so uh, that's kind of where the process of going viral started. So at what point did you realize that you had a, a potential hit really on your hands and then decide to bring in the media relations team at Georgia Tech to plan for some more exposure and be a little bit more strategic about how you handled it? There's always this interesting moment that I've been able to find when you have a YouTube video. Um, there's a point where it seems like the number of views just kind of freezes. Um, and so if you know that people are sharing this and, and, and you're watching the views on a video you've posted, we hit it about, uh, it, it was day one of the video being posted, it was stuck at about 30,000 views, but we knew that it had been viewed much more than that. So that's kind of the moment where we knew that it was it had gone viral. Um, and so at that point, I think that's where we really launched into, let's start pushing this out. This is about to be something really big. We noticed something, like with videos before, um, maybe other viral videos that we might be watching, I, I, case in point, like Harlem Shake videos, uh, that was kind of a craze. But um, you know if you if you produced one that was well and you got that kind of freeze moment where everybody was starting to talk about it and then the, the views start 
acne kind of racking up, you know you've got a, a viral video on your hands there. So Matt, what were the first media outlets that you approached and you know, was there anything special about your pitch? Did you just kind of send the link to the video and let it speak for itself or how did you go about approaching traditional media outlets? I think to some degree we, we approached people that we knew, um, first of all, and, and some key um, kind of media targets for us. So we approached some of our trade, you know, higher education trade magazines inside higher ed. Um, and then, you know, kind of looked for some folks that would help push it out as well. A uh, big hit for us was Associated Press. Uh, that seemed to hit a lot of the radio stations, not only just the print side. Um, and then we reached out to things like Huffington Post and, and places that we knew might uh, kind of be a little bit more accepting of a video like this. And one thing that you guys did, and I think this is important to note, is you know, in an instance like this where now everyone has an iPad or a smartphone or some device that's capable of recording video, so when a story like this starts to go viral, it can the video itself can come from a lot of different sources. So when you spoke with media, you asked for a Georgia Tech courtesy to be run on the bottom of the on the bottom of the video to help reinforce your brand. Tell us a little bit about that and, and what that entails. Well, we, we did exactly what you're, what you're saying. Uh, there was a couple different spots where you could see the video. So when we were talking to media, the one thing that we really wanted to make sure is that we were drawing them back to the Georgia Tech video. Um, what Stephen didn't mention is we actually did have somebody that was on campus that posted the video first. So for part of us, it was making sure that, that the video was then turned to a Georgia Tech uh, main institute outlet. Um, and that took some doing, uh, but eventually I think we got it curtailed where, where we did get a, receive a lot of hits. And Stephen, you might be able to add something to that as well. Well, um, I would just say that, you know, in situations like this, there are going to be so many different versions of the video out there. And uh, one thing that you'll notice when you have like a viral hit on your hands is that other people who have blogs and host shows and things like that online, they're going to take your video and do whatever they want with it at the point that it goes public. So you really want to make sure when you're sharing this video that you're having people use the video that you want. And we were very proactive about making sure that people knew this was our video and, and to please give us that courtesy. And, and most media outlets had no problem with that. Matt, can you identify a tipping point where it went from a video that was hitting a couple of blog or news sites to where all of a sudden it just blew up and, and it was ever, I mean, th this was on CNN and People, uh, you know, on all the major TV networks, then, you know, all the, the websites too. Was there a point where it really tipped over? It's really hard to kind of, I think, you know, pinpoint one point. You know, it did hit ABC News, and, and that obviously was a big hit for us. So we knew when it, when it hit ABC that we were going to have a really nice uh, video. Um, but I think it was just the amount of web traffic and, and social media traffic that we saw it picking up um, so quickly after it was posted. And, uh, you know, just trying to capitalize on that. And, and obviously we have to thank Nick for the great content that he gave us. <laughs> Nick, you ended up you ended up going on a national media tour of sorts to talk about the video and you were you were all over so tell us what what that entailed and how it came together and then maybe a little bit about the media training that uh, you you worked with the Georgia Tech team how did they counsel you and you know how did how did they help you navigate that national media uh, notoriety yeah for sure no it's when it started out um, there were a lot of just like things that started showing up in my inbox or on my Facebook page that kind of pointed to, hey, we would like to, to call you or have, have you have you on our show. And it was mostly smaller things. Um, I, I say smaller, but it was still really cool for me. Um, the, the Georgia Tech Media Relations Department was kind of able to take that and turn it into something to, to really maximize and capitalize on, kind of uh, going online to what Stephen and Matt were saying. But um, for, for me, what was really great about it was not only are these two guys and their entire team just really genuinely nice people who I had a lot of fun working with, um, but they're, they would do things like they would take all of the different requests that they acquired or that came to them just naturally, and they would organize them into a single, like, small digest that they would send me at night. And it's just like, here's, here's a proposed schedule for this upcoming week. And that allowed me to sleep. Like, that was fantastic. Um, as far as as far as media training goes, they, um, they they were able to sit me down and be like, hey, these are some things we run through. Just general, like this is how you how you talk in an interview session. One thing that really sticks out for me is that uh, they asked me one time. They sat me down. And they were like, so what do you want to get out of this speech? And I 
a, a speech, you know, like I just wanted <laughs> like to just bump up the audience and have a good speech. Um, they're like, but no, I mean, like now that it's now that it's gone, now that it's gotten so big, what do you want out of it? Like possibly a job? Like what 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 could you do like career wise out of this? And I thought like that was just like such a paradigm shift for me. Like what are you talking about? So they recommended that like they asked Nick. Uh, what's your dream job, job to work for? And I said, well, like SpaceX, I guess. But like, how how could this have anything to do with anything? And then they said, well, give a shout out on your next interview to, to SpaceX. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, like I'll try it out. So I did, and I went on Fox, and I mentioned that like my dream job would be working for SpaceX. Next day, I get a call from SpaceX. <laughs> What? <laughs> How does that even work? Um, so I don't know. Just like stuff that I would never have thought of. That, that these people who are experts in this in this area of media relations um, were able to, to so masterfully like string together for me and put together uh, this picture of what I was what what, what would maximize uh, everyone's joy and everyone's utility that they got out of this. It was it was a really good experience. So that's the key to, to getting college kids jobs then is have all of them do viral <laughs> videos and, uh, and then talk about their dream company. You know what, I mean, Stephen and I, Stephen and I were talking a little bit last week and one of the things that I thought was really neat and he was telling me about the, the media tour is that, you know, they really left it up to you with the programs that you wanted to do. They helped you field requests and they counseled you on you know, which type of programs maybe had which type of goals in mind, and but they let you make those choices because it was kind of your moment, and they were able to, you know, give you some advice, but they basically helped you organize and then let you take it from there. Absolutely. Uh, there, were, there were a lot of times where I was coming to them with advice on other things, and there were a lot of requests I got that were very obviously just kind of like um, somebody else was trying to take advantage of, the, the fame that the speech got up. Somebody like wanted to buy copyrights from it or turn it into like a book or something. And it's like, you know, a lot of these things is like, ah, this is a scam. Cool. <laughs> um, and they were so, so helpful on that. And they very much made it like, this is your moment. It's obviously a once in a lifetime experience for you. So the priority on, on enjoying this was, was on me. And that was really nice to experience from, from these guys and this team. And I hear that you never missed class. With all these interviews and all this time talking to all these reporters, you uh, you kept your academics front and center, so that's great. Thank you, absolutely. Yeah, they were very respectful of that, too. One of the things that I love about this video is that Nick really embraces and personifies Georgia Tech, and, and in a way, it's brand. I mean, he's smart, but he's friendly and approachable, and he's, like, geeky confidence. He's inspired. And there's a lot of viral videos that end up being just, you know, students doing something goofy. I mean, you mentioned Harlem Shake videos, Stephen, which are fun and silly, but they don't do a heck of a lot to promote an institutional brand or to kind of speak to the institutional mission. Mm -hmm. Matt, I just want to get your take on, you know, how, how did you ensure that some of Georgia Tech's brand and larger story made its way into some of these media stories. So, you know, how were you kind of leveraging the attention that, that Nick created about Georgia Tech and turned it into an opportunity to tell the greater story? I think the first of, first of all, I mean, Nick gave us great content. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is listen to the speech and, and you get a sense of what Georgia Tech's really about. So, um, you know, we really have to thank him. There wasn't a lot we had to do to work in the Georgia Tech message because he worked it into what he was saying. One thing that I think we, we did do, um, and I apologize if you were going to mention this a little later, Amy, but we were able to take a little piece of that video and make it into our PSA, and I think that really kind of showed how much we thought it connected with our audience and, and really connected with the Georgia Tech brand. Yeah, so that's the, that's the ad spot that's running during uh, your PSA at football games this year. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, it's an excerpt of kind of the 30 seconds of the most thrilling part of the speech, and then that's a TV spot for you guys now, so... Great. That's right. Um, at some point during all of this positive attention, uh, Gawker ran a post that accused Nick of plagiarizing the speech. So, Nick, give us the background on what really happened. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so, I was trained in public speaking at uh, Desert Vista High School back in Arizona, speech theater and debate team. And they are a fantastic team filled with fantastic coaches. And one of my coaches, his name is Andy Stone, gave a speech in college on science fiction literature in which he um, used the same the same epic theme music with the you can do that message um, for a different purpose. And it was the most phenomenal speech I had ever seen. 
So um, when I was allowed to, to present this convocation speech, I was trying to think of like an amazing way to end my own, and of course thought of his. So I went and I emailed him and I asked him and I said, hey, do you mind if I use this? Um, he said, sure, and then was so supportive when it came out like, um, it was just like a lot of fun uh, for, for both of us, and he's, he's, I mean, he's just a great guy and a great speaker and a great friend of mine. Um, and then no one knew that it was going to get so big, so when all of his friends, because he's such a great guy, uh, saw this thing exploding, they wanted to defend him, which is absolutely valid. And I can be a little bit frustrated that, I don't know, they didn't check the Facebook message that I put up for the public to see or just ask him, but... Um, it was it was uh, it was it was an honest it was an honest error and um, I'm I'm happy that it got all cleared up. Like again, Georgia Tech Media Relations Department did a really good job with that, which they can speak to a little bit more. Um, yeah. So uh, Nick, you you used Facebook to address those allegations. You put a post up saying, "Nope, he was my coach. I got permission." And then Matt, tell us about how you moved to kind of stay ahead of those negative stories and push to get some corrections made. I saw you know from your Twitter feed you were directly communicating. Tell us about that. Well, we were probably more aggressive um, than some people may have been in those instances, but that's just because Nick was so upfront with us about where his inspiration came. Um, you don't have to spend much time with him to see what an authentic person he is. So uh, we were really aggressive in trying to reach out via Twitter as well as reaching out via email to, to anybody that, would, um, that had written anything uh, of a negative sort. Some were receptive and others weren't, I'll be honest. You know, some of the blogs just didn't even want to run a correction, but I think the turning point was really for us when um, you know some of the big outlets ran the corrections, as well as Nick did a couple of interviews both on Fox and then his uh, local affiliate in Phoenix actually ran a uh, interview with his coach, um, and we were able to push out those links to folks to say, hey, here's even the coach saying that that Nick was working with him on this, and that was really powerful. I think ABC's news. Uh, ABC the news article actually was the, the turning point where we saw the coverage switch back to primarily positive. Great. Stephen, you shared some numbers with me last week that were really impressive. Uh, more than 5 million times this video has been viewed. 300,000 of those came just from Georgia Tech's Facebook page. Um, and it, it really it meant big in things for engagement in all of your social media channels and your YouTube channel. So tell us a little bit more about some of those numbers. Yeah, we. I mean, uh, it, it's almost difficult to measure. It was uh, so much happening at one time. Um, and, and also, just the amount of times that it's been viewed, we can only count the ones that we, the versions of the video that we know of. And I don't know that we could ever really count how many times it's been shared on a, maybe a TV station's website that now is a video that is no longer a YouTube video. So um, this was literally across the whole country. We know that it was... Um, that news stations in all 50 states ended up covering uh, this story in some form or fashion um, and showing the video there. Uh, basically, what it did for our YouTube channel was increased um, viewership almost 6,000%, uh, and that was in the span of a month. Um, and the other thing that was important for us is to include some of the, you know, after you're finished watching one version of this video, hey, we've got other videos on our YouTube channel. So um, we were able to see some nice interaction on, on the other videos that we have posted uh, on our YouTube channel. And, and the videos we've posted since have also been doing a lot better. So just across all our, our social media platforms, this has been, been a great thing for us. And I, I want you to tell us a little bit about uh, what was happening with internal communications at Georgia Tech. So while you're working on all of this national media outreach and it was kind of blowing up externally, how were you keeping, first of all, just the communications team at Georgia Tech apprised of what was going on because everything was happening so fast? And then how were you involving the Georgia Tech community internally in this great story? Well, um, you know, we, we stay connected through email, uh, obviously, and, and that was a big part of just kind of talking about everything that was going on. We would kind of do, um, whenever we have anything uh, on a certain topic going on, what we'll do is we'll kind of uh, talk about all the media hits that we've got or maybe share some of the comments or tweets that we're seeing and, and, and we'll email that out. Um, so, you know, it was important for us just to all kind of, it, it was really a team effort on this, to, to, to be quite honest, too, that uh, our, for a couple of days, our, our entire office was just kind of focused on on this. And it was fun for us to, to all kind of, you know, huddle up and work on this together. A lot of times there's a pretty predictable pattern with with viral videos. They, there's a little bit of exposure and that leads to this 
firestorm of attention, kind of the tipping point, and it goes crazy, it's everywhere, and then it fizzles out, and in the end, it's something that's just kind of this flash in the pan. But, Stephen, you're working to ensure that you can sustain this as a campaign. So tell us about some of the things that you're planning. You know, Matt mentioned that you've turned the speech into the PSA that's running um, during your football games. What other things are you doing at Georgia Tech? Well, um, one of the things we immediately realized is, and we kind of touched on this earlier, that this is a lot about Georgia Tech's brand. It's the kind of students we have. They're engineers. They're creators. Uh, they're they're students who are looking to change the world. So having a message like we can do that really kind of brings everybody together, all the students, also our faculty, and then it really our alumni, too, who are out in the world who are doing that. So um, <laughs> one of the first things that we did was um, I thought, gosh, we need a T-shirt for this. So we've got a T-shirt that's got the hashtag we can do that on it, and it just turned out that as all this was happening at the height of the speech, um, our president was giving the Institute address. And so uh, what we were able to do is it was a very quick turnaround. We had a couple of days to get this uh, uh, kind of accomplished, but we were able to um, create uh, a few thousand shirts, um, bring them to campus and start handing them out. And it's been great. Like we, we've had people in, in at, you know, Hartsfield Airport, the busiest airport in the world, that have taken pictures of people in these, you know, we can do that shirts. So, um, We've got some ideas about wanting to kind of send these shirts out to some of our alumni who are doing great things and, and possibly uh, kind of build a campaign around that. And we're also just using the hashtag we can do that when we have things that are going on. If it, it's easy to figure out where it applies. So it, we've kind of got this whole conversation going about we can do that. We, we see that our students, our faculty, they're using this hashtag just to talk about, you know, things that are going on on campus. So uh, it's been exciting to follow that. That's great. No, you know, going viral. People talk about viral videos, and oh, let's make a let's make a viral video. And you know, people that are you know know what they're talking about in communications marketing. You know that you can't just set out to do that. You know, a lot of times, it's something that just happens organically. You can't plan for it. It has to just happen around really good content. But I think one of the things that you guys have really shown us is that there's a lot you can do to push things along. So the content itself is really the starting point. But there's a lot of work that happened behind the scenes to, you know, make sure that the right people were finding the video. And then once they did find it, they had access to Nick, and he was able to broaden your message more. And now you're you're doing even more to to spread this um, even further along. So, what advice would you have for people in social media or, or media relations, Matt? We'll start with you, Stephen. Um, how do you identify really good content that has has that viral potential? I think it's a lot about, um, it, it, like as you mentioned, you can't create this. And it, it comes in a moment, and I like this idea of being um, like planned spontaneity. Like you plan for things that are happening on campus, and if you are there covering these things, you're, there's just a better chance that you're going to catch that moment. You know, if you have staff that is able to go to an event that you have maybe on campus, like convocation, like graduation. Um, you know, a football game. There are these moments that happen at these things, and you have to be flexible enough to be able to capture it. Um, and just having a little bit of savvy about, is this something that created a lot of emotion in people? Is this something that is a source of pride for us? Does this speak to our brand? Is it really unique about us? Um, and when you identify that and you're able to share it quickly, I think that's a better process than trying to just hope you can create something viral. Uh, you know, I, I just think you have to be able to be flexible enough to catch the moments when they happen. And Matt, from your perspective, I mean, this this was just a no-brainer that, yeah, the media relations team really should put a lot of effort into this because here's this speech of a great student giving a great speech that just embodies the Georgia Tech brand. Um, you know, what would you say? A lot of times, you know, we talked about Harlem Shake and Gangnam Style and all these other kind of goofy videos. Um, but I, I feel like a lot of people in higher ed feel the pressure to, to do those types of things. So from your perspective in, in media relations, you know, how would you counsel some of your peers or your colleagues to say, well, you know, this is what this, is what this type of um, you know, viral content is going to mean versus something else that we could be spending our time on in the communications department? 
at least from, from this experience, I think viral videos are very um, authentic. You know, Nick really did embody what the Georgia Tech community uh, felt was kind of one of their calls and, and, and really kind of brought together a community. So I think from a media relations perspective, what you can do is, you know, if you think you have something, is don't be afraid to push it out. You know, um, we pushed it out to some outlets that maybe uh, some people wouldn't have thought of. We thought they were important for, for Georgia Tech. Um, but when you have good content and you know it's a good video um, and compelling, uh, you know, don't be afraid to go ahead and push it out. Even if it's already starting to get pick up a little bit, it doesn't hurt to give it a push. Um, the other thing is, you know, I, I really do have to give uh, Stephen Norris a lot of credit. We, uh, we have a four-person media relations team, and Stephen and I were, were the only two that were there that week. So we spent a lot of long hours trying to make sure that we planned this out as much as possible and just try to stay on top of things. So, um, you know, obviously we had great content to work with with Nick. Uh, we had a really supportive, um, you know, rest of our news team that, that did help and pitch in. Uh, but Stephen spent, I think, a lot of uh, a lot of his nights trying to call people back. <laughs> Nick, tell us just what, in general, this experience has meant for you. Uh, it's been a blast. It's been a once in a lifetime experience. Um, that's that's really all there is to it, you know. Like there there are really cool things that came out of it, like getting to talk with people from SpaceX, and I got to do like the weather for a local uh, a local like news channel, which is just hilarious and fantastic, and it's something to cross off a bucket list. But um, it's it's just been a really profoundly fun experience. That's all there is to it. And I, I, I have to say one thing. There was a great story that came. One of the best parts of, of Nick's speech was that he said, if you want to build the Iron Man suit, you can do that. And isn't it interesting today uh, that apparently uh, the White House is wanting someone, or I think maybe it's a U.S. military, but they're wanting someone to, they've commissioned a, a build of an Iron Man suit. And I, I truly believe <laughs> if it's not Nick, it will be someone from Georgia Tech. <laughs> Nick, what's next for you? You're a sophomore. You're in the middle of midterms right now. You've got, you know, SpaceX calling you. Uh, I've checked out your merit page, and you have, you know, you're a presidential scholar. You've got a ton of great achievements. So what's next for you? Well, thanks. Um, short term, got to get back to studying Chinese, um, which is tomorrow. So that'll be fun. Uh, and I like after college, I wanna I wanna go to grad school. Wanna get a, a, a master's in mechanical engineering or possibly mechatronics. Basically, I just wanna get as, as broad of a of an engineering education as I possibly can. And then long term, my I guess my career goal, which is kind of strange, is uh, to just make something such that it will change the world and will continue to change the world after I'm gone. That's what I wanna do. And you can do that because you're at Georgia Tech. <laughs> That's right. I am doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Matt or Steven, is there anything else that you want to add just about what the experience has meant to you and anything else that you've learned? I think from my perspective, it would just be, you know, we, have really, we do really have great students at Georgia Tech, and I just have to thank Nick for all of the, you know, the kind words that he said about the Institute and, and just uh, hope that other students have a similar experience. I, I agree with that completely. We were so lucky in this in this whole experience to have someone, a student as outstanding as Nick, and, and I, I don't think this would have been uh, half as good uh, if it hadn't been a, a student of his caliber. So um, we, we really couldn't pick someone better to represent the university than Nick Selby. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining me tonight and sharing your story. It was great to kind of hear some of what happened behind the scenes with this fantastic video and I'm sure everyone that's in the higher ed marketing space uh, really appreciates you spending some time to uh, give us the behind the scenes so thanks so much thanks, thank you Amy thank you next week on higher ed live uh, next Thursday at 7 p.m. it's uh, host Brent Passmore and Carrie Phillips so be sure to join in on that and check out higheredlive.com for more on what the topic will be thanks everyone for tuning in